Hello and welcome yet again to another version, another version, another episode. Should we have episodes of Siesta Time? Big plug to start with, the Backstage Heritage Collection. There is a link in the description. It's a fantastic site. It's, it's uh, <laughs> I don't know how to begin to describe it. And it's a site that hopefully is going to grow and grow and grow. And there'll be stories, there's documentation, there's photographs. I, I'm going to give them some credit. I'm pretty sure that some of the photographs that we'll be using in this series came from there. I'm not sure. They're on my hard drive. I don't know where I got them from. Except this one. This is the oldest board that I ever used in anger you know, for a proper show. I did, did a couple on this. I did some check off on this. Um, what else did I do? In fact, I might have done more than that. I certainly did some check off on it. Uh, and I did, oh, what a lovely war on it. That was fun. That's, that's worth a chat on its own. So we're going to start with Theato Lighting and particularly Control. So we'll just start off quickly going through Theato Lighting. In the beginning there was the sun and we did all our theater outdoors because that was kind of nice because it was sunny and we all got good healthy tans and then we discovered rain and night and other things that caused us to be indoors and there was no sun so we invented candles and they were great because they lit up and provided what at the time was a blinding light and we burnt down lots of theaters we then discovered oil and oil's quite important because some of you, I don't know because I don't know who's watching this, but many people in Seattle will know the term floats for footlights. And that came from having a trough of oil at the front of the stage and floating wicks in it and setting lights to them so they'd sit there and float and burn the oil and create lots of smoke and light and heat. And we burnt down lots of theatres. And then we moved on to gas. And gas was good because you could pump gas around the place in pipes. You could have a pipe you have lots of little pipes coming off with gas taps on them. You could turn the gas taps and you could control the gas flow to the jets or mantles or whatever they were using at the other end and control the intensity. We now had early form of dimming. We had control of light intensity and we burnt down lots of theatres. Then in 1881, the Savoy Theatre in London became the first theatre to be fully lit by electricity. It was, a, it was advertised as the world's first all electric theatre, which gave the audience a better atmosphere because they didn't have all the fumes and the smoke from the oil and the gas and whatever else we were trying to burn to create light. And I suppose the risk of burning down decreased noticeably. Right from the start, we had resistances um, for dimming because there were no semiconductor devices then. There were no triode valves then. The electricity was in its infinite infancy. So we didn't know about transformers and the wonderful things you can do with inductances. It was resistance dimming. And some of that was not necessarily the Savoy. I don't know what they used. But there were things called liquid dimmers, and you can find those on the Heritage site. The Backstage Heritage site has a price lists there from Strand Electric Company for liquid dimmers. They were filled with brine, and basically they worked on the electrolysis of brine. Look up the chemistry of that. It's interesting. It involves the production of chlorine gas. So we're not burning people to death now, we're electrocuting them or gassing them. That's, that's, you know, I don't know whether that's better or not. I suppose it's marginally better. Most resistances, and certainly resistance dimmers that you might still find lying around the countryside in the back of old village halls, are wire round resistances. So you either have a wire round wound around a probably ceramic former like an electric fire element, like an old electric fire element. Um, and you, yeah, you, you, you move a wiper up and down that and it introduces a length of resistance wire into the circuit and you get power control that way. Or there were individual resistances, also a wire round and quite big, uh, with a, a wiper which goes across separate studs and causes dimming. Uh, that's 
there's problems with that but yeah they're gone they don't matter this thing which is hopefully appearing there now that's a junior eight they came about they were certainly about in 1950 and they were still in the catalogues in 1974 at the grand price of 95 pound we were decimal but we didn't have vat 95 quid for that that was that was bolted to a wall but they were described as portable uh, and uh, during their time and probably for a little while after in some places they were you know the height of technology in schools and village community centers and places like that that'd be the height of technology you could hire those from your local lighting hire company and everything they're not portable i've carried one up three flights of stairs they are not portable those were actually quite good the the junior eight because the switches you see there's eight switches across the bottom and eight sockets and the switch relates to the socket and four sliders because there's four dimmers and kind of double-sided dimmers for want of a better term uh, and you can run those through through the the eight sockets and the switches are i can't remember which way round they work but it, it it's off on dim and full on so if they could be quite flexible because you can run something up to full turn it to full on bring your slider down turn the one next to it to dim and bring that up and yeah so you, you could be quite flexible and quite creative with those we will look at control of resistance dimmers remote control of resistance dimmers uh, when we move on to control videos because that's absolutely fantastic we're going to miss out um, the auto transformer because it, you know, it's, it's just easier to do that it's not that important there are advan there are disadvantages with with resistance dimming one of those disadvantages we've already mentioned is the weight and they are they are heavy they have to be heavy yeah it's got... the second disadvantage it sometimes is an advantage and that's they get hot in use because it's a resistance it's the same basically it's an electric fire and all you're doing when you're dimming or something or 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 not <laughs> you know um is changing the resistance the amount of the bar of the electric fire that you're putting into the circuit so they do tend to get quite hot which if you're in a village hall in the middle of nowhere with four foot of snow isn't a disadvantage it's quite an advantage normally yeah they get hot it's not pleasant they start to smell i suspect a few have caught fire and caused mega problems it's and they it leads on to the other thing to add to the problems they are load dependent the the yeah you need the load on them to get a proper dimmer curve you need the loads to be fairly close to their designed working load otherwise you know things work over about that much slider travel and the, or they you know yeah nothing nothing you bring the slider on the bottom you go nothing 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 oh it's been oh it's full uh and that's a problem in the old days they used to pile load lamps around the back of the cycle wherever in the basement <laughs> thousands of watts of light bulbs sat there glowing doing nothing apart from making the dimmers work properly that's it um we're not going to look at the maths of resistance dimming we will look at we'll do a load of maths at some point i suspect but not now next time we're going to look at saturable reactor because they kind of move on nicely from the auto transformer that we're not going to look at the difference being that the saturable reactor was a fully electronic controlled dimmer with huge problems but we'll come to those and we'll talk about those later we'll see you all soon